Kevin here today, and today we're going to look at a little bit of advanced functionality of Archetype. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to pretend we've already installed Archetype. There is uh, different videos for you to kind of figure that out. And we're just going to create a new one and kind of add functionality uh, a little bit at a time. So I usually like to prepend all of my data types with the data type name, and we'll call this Advanced. Of course, at first it's going to be very basic, but we're going to change that. So the first thing you do, uh, you, you'll get an archetype here and you'll get a bunch of stuff. At a minimum, we need to call this uh, something. Let's call this rich text for the moment. It, you'll automatically get an alias. Uh, I'll call it module. We'll make it easier. And then uh, we immediately need to add a property here and we're going to add a rich text editor. If we hit save, boom, there we go. We have a rich text editor. And next thing we need to do, we're going to pick a victim document type here to take on this advanced functionality. And we've got a doc type named bar. It's already got a property on there, but let's go ahead and add an archetype here. And you can name this whatever you want. Fact, uh, yeah, we'll just leave it module. We'll just call it my archetype. Let's not be too confusing. And we actually don't want this one. We want the advanced one. So we're going to hit submit. Uh, we have my archetype, and it's of the advanced variety. Now, if we come back here, we're going to create a new piece of content based on that. And we'll call it that. And we're going to save and publish. Yay, congratulations, we've added our first archetype to there. Now, it's not actually very advanced yet. In fact, all we can do is add another one and hide it, and we have text there. So, so far, not so exciting, but if we want to add another rich text field, there we go. So, this is what I would call a, uh, oh gosh, a, um, a single field set type archetype and this is uh similar to what you'll find in nested content out of the box so you'll you basically they're all the same rich text module rich text module we can add them we can sort them we can hide them if we want we can delete them so for now we'll just keep our fancy dancy uh basic actually archetype so if we flip back to the data type here that we created our super advanced one let me refresh this real quick here we go. Let's start looking at some options. So we're just going to kind of go down the, the list here. So if we play around, we'll start with add button, close, save, come back here and hit refresh. We now don't see a whole lot of change here unless we delete all of them. And now you can actually have a blank archetype. This is not possible to have a blank archetype unless you tick that box. So for now, we're going to save and publish. Uh, if we want to add something back in there, all we, it doesn't ask us what kind of field set because we only have one kind of field set. So let's come back here. Let's look at some more options. If we hide the property labels, hit close, and then save, you'll notice that right now you have the word text here. And if you had other properties, it would also have those there. We're going to now see the effect of that change. And when we click there, we, we have more space here, but it might be more confusing to your editor. Maybe, maybe not. That's up to you as the designer slash developer. But that's what hide uh, field set labels will do, or property labels, sorry. Uh, enable collapsing. So if we uncheck that box and hit save and come back here, you could have a situation where you kind of want to change your behavior a little bit here. Notice that it's automatically huge, expanded, same same thing here, and we can no longer actually collapse these things. It makes it a little tougher to, uh, or okay, a lot tougher to uh, sort these, but if you have some use case where you don't want that collapsing functionality, now you know how to do it. We're gonna put that back in there. Enable multiple open field sets. So right now you can op open and close um, all of them. So. Just that as an example, we're going to go back here. We're going to refresh, pick up that new setting change. And we're going to add one module. We're going to add two modules. Great. But what if we want to look at them and have them both open at the same time? Great. We can do that. However, if we come back here, uncheck this box, 
close, save, reload. Now it should pretty much say, no, 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 you can only have one open at a time. And there you go. And so it works as a kind of a mutually exclusive type functionality. Uh, a lot of times I'll just leave that there. Minimum field sets. So if we have make this a two and hit save, we can then come back here, hit refresh. And let's add one field set and hit save. It'll say, sorry, you need at least two. So now let's add that second one and hit save and publish. There you go. That's what the, uh, the minimum field sets will do. I'm going to take that back to empty. Uh, and then here, max field sets. This is kind of the opposite side of things. So if I make this, let's see, one, hit close, save, refresh. And now I try to publish this. It actually lets me. Let's make sure this is all fancy and working here. Okay, so because I already had two, it lets me save it. However, now it took away the add button. So if I take away even the one we had there, I'm allowed to add one in, but now I can't add two. So if you want to change the max, um, you can do so right there. We're going to just make it default. Hide field set controls. Don't use this one very often. But if we add this setting here, refresh, what it will do is actually take away all the items over there. So it's possible that if you want to build an archetype and then take away some of the functionality, you can do that. The add button is still there, but you can't sort, can't do anything. So it really locks it down. Again, I don't use that one much. It was an early on feature. Uh, enable cloning. So if we click that, save, refresh, we now see an extra button here. And if we actually put some text in here, save that, publish it, and then I say, you know what? Yeah, I want one just like that. Um, there we go. We've cloned it to another one. You can sort it, do whatever you need. And if we come back here, we'll uncheck that for now. Enable field set disabling. So let's uncheck that for a second and look here. So see the little eye here? So right now what we can do is we can disable it. That way when we render it in the future, we're actually uh, disabling that. And when we put that back on, um, it now thinks of this as an active thing. So the use case for the disable here is if we have something, but we want to temporarily say, you know what, don't delete it, but also don't show it, we can use this here. Now that we've ticked the setting in the back office that disallows that, we no longer have that as an option over here. I use that one actually uh, quite often. So we're gonna add, uh, oops, not that one, that one back in. Enable field set publishing. Okay, so this has uh, to do with some of the settings. So if we come back here and refresh, so we might want to publish a field set at a particular time. So at the bottom here, we've got this publish at, unpublish at. Ken Jacobson added this feature, and uh, it allows you to dynamically add uh, a field set at a certain time. Cross archetype dragging. All right, let's add that. But before we get much farther, what we're going to have to do is modify our doc type. If we go to bar, we're going to add a second archetype and we're going to call it my other archetype and we're going to use an, also an advanced one here I'm save and now when we come here it's basically the same settings and everything but what i can do now is i can say oh you know what come down here and we might want to move things between archetypes and that's what the cross dragging functionality will do for you so let's go back to our super advanced or let's call it the advancing archetype. And we're going to uncheck that for now. We're going to now deal with enable member group access. And I don't know if I have any members or groups enabled, so this might be uh, interesting to see what we get here. But now if we come down here to settings, I believe, yes, we, we can now say, you know, only certain groups can uh, see this. So that is an option you'll have there. Uh, I don't use it that much, but uh, I believe Ken Jacobson also added that one, and uh, he had a use case for it. 
Um, oops, we are in the wrong archetype here. Let's go to our other archetype here, global advanced settings. We're going to uncheck that. Now this one is one I check almost every time. Uh, so before we check that box, let's look at a subtlety here. So right now uh, in your archetype configuration, you have one field set type and it has one property. Notice there's no plus sign over here on the right because you can't add other types of field sets until, drum roll please, you, you take that box and you hit save. Now you have this little plus sign here. And when you hit that, you can now have not only the rich text module, you can now have the, say, the embed module. And then this one here will just be a giant um, text area. And of course, you can add as many things as you want. Uh, when we save that, it'll be great. And we come back here, we'll reload here. A little bit of magic happens. And now we can add either the rich text module or the embed module. And so um, here's the uh, rich text and let's add the embed module. There you go. So now you have different types of field sets, but wouldn't it be nice if you had a little icon here that said something to the effect of, hey, this gives, gives you a vi visual clue. And yes, we can. So when we uh, enabled multiple field sets, it actually opens this up too and allows us to pick an icon for each one of these. I'm just going to pick some arbitrary ones at the moment. Now when I refresh here, and let's add that embed module. Bingo, there we go. Now we have a little visual cue. All right, moving down the list though, when we enabled this here, we actually now have field set group enabled. So what we can do here is it's possible you have a bunch of modules and now it's just too much. So what we can do is call this one texty group and we can call this raw data group or whatever you want to call these, it don't matter. And now that we've configured those, you can now say you belong to that group, you belong to that group, and when we save this, reload, uh, oops, and then we hit add. We now have the texty group and the raw data group here, and that's what those do, and that is very useful. I think I have to credit Ken Jacobson again. Uh, because uh, it can get a little noisy in that little pop-up. So those are most of those options there. Um, just to make sure we check off these other options here. So if we do here, let's say you need a CSS class to be associated with the output. What we can do is put that class here. We can also say, you know what, I need a special CSS class to, uh, to render my archetype. This is in the back office. And you can actually provide a path there. Same with JavaScript. And oh lord, you can even switch out the archetype view in the back office to totally rearrange things and you can provide that there. And then lastly, we have the developer options. The enable deep uh, data type requests basically um, allows somebody to intercept the path. Don't use that one uh, often at all. Uh, toggle developer mode. This one's kind of cool. Let's tick that box and close and save. So you won't see anything here, but what you will see on this page, in this red text that just shows up, here's the raw data that's being stored uh, for this data type. And here you can possibly debug any issues you have. One thing that Archetype is not good at is if you rename the alias of a property, um, it gets possibly a little confused. Uh, what you can also do is you can actually uh, pull this data out altogether or co copy and paste values in there and it will actually dynamically uh, update, provided you give it reasonably uh, coherent uh, JSON. All right, so we're gonna untick that. Um, let's say uh, when you're trying to render this in the front end, you want a different property value converter. Uh, I had somebody uh, ask for this. You can actually say, you know what? I've got my own. Please don't use the built-in one. You can tick that box. And then we've got, we do collect information uh, to, to give you the best experience in uh, archetype possible and you can uncheck this box and click this link for our more information on that if you don't want to participate one of the cool features is also this here so if we get rid of this 
here, um, all the configure options go away. Ooh, that sounds scary. Uh, but what we can also do then is go to another archetype, copy the information out there, go to one here, and this can be across different builds, and paste that in there, and it works. One word of caution is, is obviously it's um, looking for a particular GUID for a data type. And if that GUID doesn't exist across the system, you might run into a little bit of trouble there. Okay, on the home stretch here, one thing I do want to show you is the label templates. Um, so what you can do is say, hey, instead of showing, and let's refresh this real quick. Instead of showing something that says rich text module, looks like we didn't save our developer mode. Uh, let's say we wanted this to say something else or a preview of what's in the block. So what you can do is um, have a label template. And to deal with that, um, basically you go down here and say, okay, I've got something called rich text. And I'll come here and do the mustache notation, or at least that's our handlebars, however you want to do that. We're going to just put in text. And I have some built-in uh, label templates in there. And... Uh, I think uh, there's there's a few in there. One's for URL picker, multi-URL picker by Rasmus. And so what we can do is now it shows exactly what's in there. And there's some limitations or whatnot. You can provide your own uh, label template. This is definitely outside the scope of this video, but uh, there, are, um, there are tutorials on that or some samples at least. And finally, the last option I want to talk to you about is the preview image. And you can actually provide a preview image. So when you're trying to add something here, um, it can actually include a preview. So that's archetype, uh, kind of the advanced stuff, uh, as quick as I could possibly do it. Notice that we have a manual link here, uh, information disclosure, quick start video. This will be the page builder one. Uh, contact us on Twitter, check out the source on Git, you can become a sponsor, and you can donate. Thanks again for watching, and be sure to subscribe.